Hello, we're going to make a connecting rod. This is going to control our stroke length. So we're going to, half of this is going to fit around our crankshaft and half of it's going to come up to the wrist pin that goes to the piston on top. So we've got a diameter of one and a diameter of 1.25. And again, you don't have to copy the dimensions I'm using. You just have to make sure that all of your parts will fit together correctly. So we have one side that's small that goes to the piston and the larger size over here, this is what's going to be fitting in and around your crankshaft. And I'm going to just make these two edges. These are going to be a little bit thicker than the rest of the bar. Remember, we don't want any of these engine parts to be overly heavy. We want to make these light, light, light. Here I'm opening up the piston again just to grab dimensions off of that. This is where the wrist pin will go and where the small end of my connecting rod is going to just fit snugly right up into there. So that will fit right on inside of the piston. Okay, so there's the edges. Go ahead and slice the graphics and we'll make the center of this rod. Putting in some construction lines and if you do a Google image search of connecting rods that have broken, those are kind of some interesting things. These have huge RPMs. Typical car, you're looking at around 500 RPM while it's idling up to, I don't know, around 2000 at 60, 70 miles per hour. This thing is gonna support a force of around four tons on this little guy. This is what's moving the entire car forward. This is what connects your, um, your piston where the combustion chamber is happening and this is what pushes that crankshaft around. So quite a lot of force. These are typically made by forging them out of most commonly steel alloys. You'll sometimes see some aluminum or titanium connecting rods in the high performance vehicles, but usually just like a chrome molly alloy with, um, it's gonna have to have really high tensile and compressive strengths. So like a 4340 alloy or something. Corners concentrate stress, so you're gonna wanna keep everything curved and no sudden transitions from one piece to the other. So just use that fillet edge over and over again, or if you want some larger radii, sometimes using that circle will do it. We're gonna create an I-beam that goes around the whole edge of this thing. And I-beams, you'll learn about I-beams in statics and some of your other mechanics and materials classes and why those work. It's a um, moment of inertia calculation, actually. But I-beams are very hard to bend. It's why you use them in bridges and construction. And you also use them here in connecting rods. Occasionally, you'll see a different cross-section design, like on um, trains, steam locomotives. You can see rectangular cross-sections on some of those guys. And for... Um, for the boats, marine, you'll sometimes see just a round cross-section, but the most efficient use of materials is the I-beam design. As you're designing these things, think about how they could be made more efficiently, what the problems are with this. For instance, with a connecting rod, it's constantly kind of have this sideways push and the inside of it and it turns it wears the cylinder into more of an oval cross section than a circular cross section just because it's pushing along the sides during every stroke and of course if you turn it <coughs> the the borehole into an oval the piston rings aren't gonna create a solid seal around that piston anymore and you'll have a lot of loss for energy you also have to think about different ways to um, lubricate this to get oil to it if you need oil to it if this thing gets stuck and so that it can no longer easily rotate around that wrist pin it can't easily rotate around the crankshaft there's this is where all the friction and a lot of the energy loss for the whole vehicle happens is in all of these connections so what kind of bearings are you going to use to to smooth all of this out so kind of be thinking through those things in your mind because as it is, engines are horribly energy inefficient. We really need to get something a little bit better than, than what we have right now. I don't know if any of you have ever thrown a rod in your engine. It's, it's pretty exciting. You can put a broken rod straight through the side of your crankcase and it completely trashes the entire engine. I, you just, you can't repair it. You have to go get an entirely new engine after that. 
and it's you know it's a result of fatigue again this is huge rpms that this thing is going under if you didn't change your oil that's another thing that'll lead to throwing a rod and the other thing is the the little bolts that hold this thing together you have to have some way to put it around the crankshaft and if your bolt fails then that'll take out your rod too your bolts and connection, this is the major portion of your manufacturing costs, of your maintenance costs, of a lot of the product recalls revolve around faulty fasteners. So just loose nuts and bolts are a huge problem. So as you create these connections, think about how this thing could be manufactured easier, assembled easier, maintained easier and it all comes down to how it's connected together how each of these little parts is is put together so just changing like the design of the your bolt head that can change your manufacturing costs but it's not just manufacturing costs you have to make sure that this thing isn't going to fly apart when it's in use so there's a lot of different competing needs that has to be considered when you're making these things. Okay, so there is half of our connecting rod. Next thing, we're gonna have to make a new part for the cap of this thing. Give each part a very descriptive name as you're saving it, and this is gonna go into your parts list as we're creating our working drawing in the IDWs after, after we're done with this. And I like to keep all of my parts open so you can kind of flip back and forth from one to the other to make sure all of your dimensions are matching up with one another. So your cap, of course, is going to have to fit exactly on the top of that connecting rod with your holes that line up. And easiest way, even just copy and paste. Control C, Control V, paste it. So learn how to use your copy and paste and move and hopefully you're getting familiar with some of the constraint tools and going back and forth to modify what you need to modify. This first run through, keep everything simple. If you have extra time in the future and enjoy engines and want to go back and actually start creating all of the little pieces like the bearings and individual bolts and wrist pin and snap rings and piston rings and all of those little itty bitty pieces that would be great but for now I'll show you some constraints that you don't actually have to have every little piece of it to put it together so start simple and then if you want to add some more things to it in the future I'll give you extra credit for that that'll make up for if you had something from earlier in the semester you didn't quite get through you can just go to town on the engine project instead if you want Okay, we're almost through with this thing. Just one more sketch here at the end. And again, I'm just going to open up what we had before, scroll through till you find what you need, copy it onto the clipboard if you're going from one file to the other. Control V, paste it in there. So I'm going to create a center point on here that I can move it into place. Just get familiar with all those modify tools and practice makes perfect on this thing. It's a lot of time. It's very time consuming, but hopefully you can put on some music and get some snacks and relax and kind of enjoy playing and goofing around on it. Okay, that's the end of the connecting rod.